This is the TCAP or 10 Ready test for Integrated Math 1. Question number 7. We're still in subpart 1, which means no calculator still, but this one doesn't really need a calculator. The triangles QTP and SPT are shown. You'll notice that they share things, so really the only part that is different between them would be these points here. Line RM is the perpendicular bisector, which means that this distance is the same as this distance. And I guess I should mark it with 2 since these are marked. Um, it not only makes a 90 degree angle, it splits this equally in half. And uh, it's a perpendicular line. It intersects line segment PT at point M. So right here is the point that it intersects, which would make sense. Now, the question says which transformation would imply that QTP is congruent to SPT? So congruence requ requires, the number one requirement, or the two requirements are that the corresponding angles are congruent, which means they have the same measures, and corresponding uh, sides are also of same measure. So this isn't similarity, it's congruence. So I need to take a look and see what's already set up for to be able to prove that that's true. My corresponding angles would be Q and S, T and P, and P and T. So that's what I'm going to look for in this one. I'll see if any of them are marked. Well, angle P is marked as being congruent to angle T, so this checks out, check, and angle T here and P here, you'll notice that P, T, T, P, so the angle that I really can't say much about would be this one, yet, I can't say it yet, um, and because this is the same this is marked out, this side is marked to be the same, so ST is congruent to QP. Boom. PM is congruent to MT, but we can just say that uh, in this case TP and PT are the same. Why would they make you take any tests where the, like, um, abbreviation for toilet paper isn't it? It's beyond me. I, if I was younger I couldn't get past it I guess. Uh, I just think about it, it wouldn't make me laugh anymore. But anyway, what they want to know is what translation can we do that would make that or, or imply that they are congruent. The thing about a translation is uh, ones that will can be used to show congruence would be rotations when one kind of spins around and looks exactly like the other. Uh, reflection where you just flip one over and they sort of the one lands on top of the other one and then the other one would be a uh, translation where you move it. So I'm gonna in my head move QTP so I'm gonna worry about this triangle first. A horizontal translation the length of PR. So if I went from here to here it would move this triangle up but I mean we're still dealing with something similar to, I don't know why I did it that way. So if this point moves up here, I'm still dealing with this, which doesn't really give me anything to show me that it's the same as this one over here. You know, they're, they're not on top of each other. So that's out. Uh, a horizontal translation length of PT. So here, I end up getting something like this. It doesn't really say anything about these two. There's a lot of uncovered spots. So if I was going to shade this in, you'll notice that there's no showing that there's no uh, visual that could make me think that they're congruent. A reflection over RM. That's interesting. So if I use this as kind of a pivot point, and I reflect this over here, it will fall right on top of this. This would fall right on top of this, and then this point would fall right on top of this. So you'd end up with that right there. And you'll notice now that that's definitely implying that it's the exact same shape or that they are congruent at that point. So I would say strongly that a reflection over RM gives me the information that I need to make that determination. A reflection over SP would actually send this point down here and it wouldn't 
fall right on top of the other one. So when you're trying to prove congruence or at least imply congruence through translations, look around to see if it sort of if there's a way that you can move one of the two shapes so it actually falls over and shadows completely the other and then it would sort of imply that they are congruent.